When it comes to a winning strategy for progressive causes, gay rights activists have it down. They've shown they know how to keep the pressure on politicians as long as it takes to win. For example, Lieutenant Dan Choi chained himself to the White House as part of an ultimately successful campaign to force Congress to act, act on Don't Ask, Don't Tell, the repeal of it, obviously. The activists have also succeeded in changing public opinion on same-sex marriage. This year, for the first time, polls showed a majority of Americans supported legalizing it. In March, a Washington Post poll found 53% of people said same-sex marriage should be legal. Just five years ago, that number was only 36%. Furthermore, five states and Washington, D.C. have legalized same-sex marriage. Twelve others have legalized same-sex civil unions or domestic partnerships. But there's a major obstacle in the fight for gay rights. It's called the Defense of Marriage Act. It's a federal ban on same-sex marriage that was passed in 1996. The Obama administration said earlier this year it will no longer defend it in court. That's good news. But Speaker Boehner is on the case. He has hired former Bush-era U.S. Solicitor General Paul Clement to defend DOMA. Clement is getting paid $520 an hour of taxpayer money to defend something that most people don't agree with in the first place. So now activists are turning their sights on Clement and his law firm King & Spalding, ramping up the pressure. Will they win again? And how do they keep winning all these fights when the rest of the progressive movement is still struggling on almost every other front? Well, joining me now is Richard Socrates. Socrates, sorry, President of Equality Matters and former senator, I'm sorry, senior advisor to President Bill Clinton. Okay, Socrates, is that, hey, is that a Greek name? Socrates, Greek, yes, the Greeks and the Turks are on tonight. <laughs> All right, there you go. God bless America. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so talk to me. What are the different methods that uh, gay activists use to achieve a political goal that maybe we can learn from? Well, listen, I think that we've met with some very recent success, the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell, and the Justice Department's decision not to continue to defend this horrible law, the, the so-called Defense of Marriage Act. But, you know, we've done two things. First of all, we've worked at this for a very long time. You know, this, the, this is the combination of two decades of work. And also, you know, what my group, especially Equality Matters, is trying to do is we're trying to hold both friends and foe accountable, both hold, hold everybody accountable for what they said and be willing to speak the truth and be willing, you know, to say both to friends and to people who don't usually support us that they have to do what they say they're going to do. Richard, that's really interesting because we were just having a conversation about that in the last segment. How, though? How do you hold them accountable if they're normally your allies? Well, I think you have to speak the truth and you have to call them out when they're not moving fast enough or when they're not delivering. I think you have to do that. And for instance, uh, you know, President Obama uh, moved very slowly on Don't Ask, Don't Tell, and it looked like we were not going to get Don't Ask, Don't Tell repeal through in the last Congress. And it was only when pressure on members of Congress directly was turned up and the heat was turned up that we got that through. And had we waited uh, for the military, like some people wanted to, we'd be, we'd be probably now without Don't Ask, Don't Tell repeal. So I think the answer is, 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 you know, just be honest and be direct and hold people accountable. But let's keep it even more real. When you say pressure, what kind of pressure? Well, I think, you know, that one of the things you cited at the, uh, in the intro, that uh, we had people like Lieutenant Dan Choi, uh, who was a very compelling figure, who was willing to take whatever action was required, like chain himself to the White House fence. I mean, this was a person who, what, all he wanted to do was serve his country. All he wanted to do was do what he'd been trained to do, and he wasn't being allowed to do it. It didn't make any sense, and he wasn't willing to take it. So I think that, you know, there are other people like Dan Choi who are no longer willing to take this kind of discrimination. Right. But but I want to keep it even more real. <laughs> Is there money pressure uh, where somebody goes, hey, you know what, I'm going to lose my donors. I don't like that. Now all of a sudden we got a problem. Well, you know, I think money certainly is an element to it. I mean, you know, you, you said in the introduction how King & Spaulding, this very prominent national law firm, has taken on uh, the defense of this horrific law, and we think it's deplorable. I mean, they obviously have a choice to do it, but other people have a choice whether or not to use them. I mean, I think Speaker Boehner here is using taxpayer dollars to do this. He's got his own lawyers. I mean, why can't he use the House of Representatives lawyers to do this? Why, in a, in, with these deficits, is he spending an additional half a million dollars at a minimum to defend this law. So, I mean, 
So Go if ahead. King and Spalding is worried about losing some clients, perhaps they're not interested in this case as much. Is that is that the strategy? Well, I mean, you would think that they would have thought about this before they took the case. I mean, they have a pretty good record uh, when it comes to hiring uh, openly gay people and when it comes to uh, you know their their participation in the community. But we can't quite understand why they took this case. I mean, it certainly wasn't for the money. I mean, you know, they're a very lucrative law firm. They make a lot of money, even though even though half a million dollars is a lot of money. For right. some reason, they decided to take this case, and we think it's deplorable, and we think it's deplorable. Most importantly, that Speaker Boehner would go out and spend an right. additional half a million dollars of taxpayer money to defend a law that he has all these lawyers at the House of Representatives to defend. Right. All right. Very interesting conversation. Again, Richard Socarides, president of Equality Matters, thank you so much for your time tonight. Thanks, Jack.